Welcome to Art and Soul, where creators take center stage. Tonight's guest is Leon Salem. Um, he's an actor and film composer, and tonight he's going to share uh, how he approaches uh, film composition. Thank you, Leon, for coming on the show. My pleasure. You have a, a beautiful set here. It looks almost like a house. <laughs> Funny. Um, <laughs> it actually is. Like, that's oh. my kitchen. And <laughs> Silly me. Yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, if, let's start uh, uh, briefly at the beginning. How did you uh, first get into... Uh, film composing or music? Well, uh, when I was a child, <clears throat> I'm talking about eight, nine, ten years old, youngster, uh, I listened to uh, recordings that my dad would bring home. And those were the days when we had LPs, you know, vinyl. And he would bring home uh, the latest popular singers and big bands and jazz groups of, of the time. So he would bring home Sinatra and uh, Ella Fitzgerald and uh, Tony Bennett and people like that. And uh, <clears throat> maybe Dave Brubeck, uh, Miles Davis, and uh, so these these recordings that I listened to were based on uh, the music of the day, and it would it interested me because I saw the excitement that he liked from that. And he also brought home some Latin music too. He brought home Pres Prado, oh, wow. and uh, Tito Puente, and so I had like a nice Bro. convergence of styles at at that age, and I loved it, and. Um, so I would listen to uh, singers like Sinatra, and then uh, and his voice appealed to me, and also the music behind Sinatra, which supported his singing, which was crucial to his success. Guys like uh, Nelson Riddle and uh, Billy May and uh, Don Costa, uh, those were great arrangers that he used. And I started listening to what they were doing. I kind of blocked Sinatra's voice out, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I, which... I've, I've developed that now. I could do that and just listen to the background and break apart what was going on in terms of instruments and listen to the combinations of instruments. And um, that started to intrigue me. Um, and I started to listen to the relationship between those r arrangements and, and uh, musical uh, background techniques that were used to uh, support a singer. And then I started to listening to music and film, and that, that would uh, naturally transfer itself to uh, supporting actors and scenes and films. So this was the same, it was the same principle, mm -hmm. but it was uh, much more involved. Yeah. So w who would you say were your, like your major influences <clears throat> musically? Uh, well, like, like I mentioned, the, the singers, and as far as uh, scoring, uh, John Williams, of course, <clears throat> and... Uh, there's a fellow out now who maybe a lot of people don't, don't know. His name is Christoph Beck, and he's a, just a terrific composer, in my estimation. He's, he's pretty popular in Hollywood. Mm. And he did the film Under the Tuscan Sun with oh, Diane yeah. Lane. So yeah. That, yeah, and I, I'm enamored to that score. I, it's a beautiful score from top to bottom. And I really got, I sat up and took notice of this guy because he really has a, a beautiful way of writing. And... Um, he also did the scoring for one of the, Pink, maybe two, of the Pink Panther films. Oh, okay. After the original one. Yeah. Yeah, and that had a, a Henry Mancini score originally. Yeah. And uh, so um, he adapted it and, and updated that, and, he, you know, he used that theme. Yeah. Da -da, da -da, yeah. Da -da, da -da, yeah. Yeah. And so that was like a universal thing. But he changed it a little bit, but the, the, the kernel of it was still there. Mm-hmm. Now, um, there's a clip that I, I want to show of your work um, <clears throat> yeah. uh, called Murder, Murder, It's for the Birds. Murder is for the Birds. <coughs> it's for the Birds. Murder, It's for the Birds. It's like, you know, that's, that's for the birds. <laughs> that way. And you scored that whole film? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was a short film. It was, I think, 28 minutes or something. Oh, nice. And it was uh, <clears throat> written by uh, a couple of good friends, Miriam Goodspeed and Ellen Schnur. And they have a tremendous gift for writing comedy. And oh. they're, they're terrific. Is this a comedy? It's a murder comedy, kind of a dramedy. Oh, I and love there's, it. And you know, there's all kinds of things happening, but it's, it's kooky, you know, one kooky. of those things. Well, I, and this is the beginning clip, is that right? Well, this clip has, uh, what I wanted to show was that a, a composer may be called upon to score different parts in the film with different sounds. So in the beginning, there's the opening, and then the may need a jazz sound or, or a, uh, you need a background track for a uh, party. You know, like people are, you know, mingling and having drinks yeah. and having a good time, and it, but it's just background. So 
that's another thing. It may, and then there may be a straight ahead jazz thing just to fill in a certain uh, type of scene that where you need something, you know, uh, mysterious in a way. Yeah. So you would maybe use that and call upon that. But I wanted to mention the um, the opening uh, credits uh, besides the music, which I just gave to this fellow. Uh, his name is Jason Weldborn, and he he animated this opening scene. Right. He did a heck of a job. I gave him the music, and he just went. I gave him the ideas, <clears throat> and um, he's actually a Ringling graduate. Oh. So I got his name off of the Ringling website, and was able to get in touch with him because yeah. some of the people, the alumni, leave their names, you know, available, and I emailed whoever's out there that does animation. He also does CG work. He did a uh, a thing on the same film where he has a uh, uh, two pelicans talking. And they look like actual pelicans when their mouths are moving. Wow. And I did the voiceover for one. <laughs> it was kind of silly. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a very enjoyable film. I loved uh, writing the score, and it okay. gave me a lot of freedom. Okay, so, well, let's take a look at that clip. Okay. Okay, that's that was really neat. And then you said that it was uh, Jason Wellborn. Jason Wellborn. Yeah, yeah. So how long did it take you to just write that intro piece? I mean, you had to did you have to sync it with the animation. Or? No, no, he did that. <gasps> I sent it to him. I told him, uh, you know, go, you know, do what you got to do. Wow. And uh, he uh, got the idea of the film. I told him a little bit about the story, mm -hmm. and so he had he had the uh, the way to, to base it on because he knew a little bit of this and that in the story, and and so he based it on what I told him. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was really, it really was good. Um, so what is your composing process? I mean, is there a specific <clears throat> procedure that you follow when you're scoring? Um, there's no set procedure uh -huh. uh, for uh, most composers, but then somehow set in a certain pattern that they like to use. Naturally, you take a look at the film when you get it. Right. Uh, maybe two, three times, and you start to get, you know little things of ideas that you want to use. And so you uh, maybe jot something down, mm -hmm. uh, musically jot something down, uh, or even just writing in English. You know, I want dramatic here, I want this to drop out, and so, far, so right. forth and so on. So uh, there are ways of, of doing it if, in that respect. And then there's uh, people that just throw the thing up there, they've never watched it, and they work from there. Wow which keeps the improvis improvisatory aspect of it going because you're doing it on the spot. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's another way of doing it. Uh, then the other ways are, you know, suggestions from the director, producer, and then uh, you throw something back and say, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And, uh, and it eventually gets there. And uh, sometimes you have to make changes, and uh, I'm not afraid of doing that. Uh, some composers, you know, what they write is what's going to happen really you know but you got to be flexible you know you got to work with people so and uh now you also did a, a film called run wild right and i've seen that one yeah and in this clip um <clears throat> did you score the whole film yeah the whole film right yeah and uh it was uh di directed and uh, written by uh, a gentleman named josh wagner and it was dp'd by uh, Benny Tan, who was my contact. I never met Josh. Um, and um, one of my favorite actors in the area, uh, John O'Keefe, was the lead. You know him. I love John. Uh, yeah. And um, the other actress uh, opposite him was Kaylee Korshid, which I, ha I haven't met her, but she was also excellent. Yes. But anyway, to, to make, the, uh, make it brief, uh, this is, was a very sensitive story. Yeah. And it needed, you know, light accompaniment. Yeah. <clears throat> because John plays a, b a blind person in this, 
and he lost his wife and child in an accident, mm -hmm. and he's been blind since then. And then uh, she lost her dad when she was younger. Mm -hmm. And so she's, John is a writer in this, and so she came to interview him uh, at his home, and uh, she started uh, to talk about his life and, and how he went through things and things like that. And so the fact that she lost her dad at a young age and he lost his wife and child. There's just some some symbiosis there, a right. connection, you yeah. know. So that that made for a nice story. And I used the uh, cello, yeah, you know, for the for John's character, and I used uh, the uh, piano and uh, light strings for uh, uh, Kaylee's character. So it is that contrast there. Yeah, it came out real nice. It's a sweet film. And it's beautiful and yeah. intimate. I loved. Yeah. I loved the music in it. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at that. He uses the senses that grew from his condition. A simple candle to me was a tropical paradise to him. Over the course of the week, he opened up more about his work, but I struggled to have him open up about his life until one day. It gets more difficult trying to remember her. She had a love for writing, just as much, if not more, than I did. I've been trying to finish her story for years. The children's books seem to be more difficult to write than adult ones. I love children's books. It's what I want to do. How long did it take you to score that? Um, I believe it was a total of eight minutes, that film. Yeah. Uh, it felt like a whole movie. It did not feel like yeah, it was like, a nice. It was such. A, it had a story from beginning to end. Right, I really it had a nice it. development and everything. Yeah, you saw how they came together. Um, and there was a flashback in the middle of everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like how they have time for that. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take? Um, generally, I, I compose maybe three to four. If I'm lucky, I'll get five minutes a day uh, worth of film out. Wow. So. Uh, now that, is that for all film. Not necessarily, no. If the score is more involved, if there's more instruments involved, mm -hmm. then things will take longer naturally. If it's a total orchestral thing, you know, right. all the sections of the orchestra, if I'm doing that, then you have to play all the sections of the orchestra and right. lay them down. Yeah. So the, the scoring process for that film may have been three to four days, uh, and plus you need another day to mix all the sounds. You have to blend them, you know. Mm. You can't have the piano loud and the strings down here. <laughs> So you have to have a connection between them. And in the middle. There you go. And you have to make sure it's not overly loud. Right. And then you have to blend all of that, maybe put a little reverb on something and do a little EQ, change the way the pitch of the instrument sounds. Uh, and think the frequency, I mean. Uh, and that's, so that maybe took uh, three, four days or so. And, you know, it was, it was a pleasure to work with though it was you know they get you get some films you get attached to oh I bet. You was know? that one of them yeah that was one of them that was good yeah yeah and i, I enjoyed that job sometimes uh, things work out <laughs> oh absolutely yeah. um so when you know so when you you're, when you're composing a film you said usually it's about four to five um is it you said it's different you know if if it has more orchestration right. it, what are other things that can contribute to the le like how long it takes for you to compose um for a film? timing you have to get the timing right where the where you think the uh, music should kick kick in, mm -hmm. especially on dialogue, right? And uh, where it should rise and fall. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, listening to the, the old recordings with big bands and singers and orchestras and singers, right, you you realize that the people that are arranging the music and composing the music for the big bands and the orchestras behind a singer. Uh, know where to lay back when the singer's out front and the singer's cooking, you know? Ah. And then when the music, when the singer has a, a break in the middle of a song, the band comes and does its thing, mm -hmm. and the music rises. And then when the singer comes back in, if you're building up a crescendo, then you may make a little more noise in the background. But that's mainly with singing, uh, writing for singers. And in film, it's the same technique, because when you have a dialogue, you want to lay behind a dialogue. You want to support the dialogue, and it's got to be there in the background, but it shouldn't be noticed. You know, it's something that is subtle, but it has an effect, and people who watch the film don't know 
wow, the music is really affecting this scene, which it's supposed to do. And then when there's action, people running and uh, uh, there's fighting, and so you raise the level of the music in those instances where uh, there's more things going on and there isn't dialogue. So, so that's, that's how that works. And, um, you know, you got to be delicate with that and, and know where music comes in and goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so in a film's budget, uh, you know, how do you, how do you determine that? Like, well, what things you can take into consideration when you determine your fee? Is it fixed or does it, you know, what, what affects that? Uh, I don't have a fixed fee. No, every film is different. Mm -hmm. Every budget is different. Well, don't I know Sometimes that? Sometimes there's no budget, <laughs> and I've done a bunch of those, and yeah. I've continued to do some of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I like to help people when I score, and uh, usually I uh, help the film students out because... Um, and this next clip now, this is for Dry, this is for Dry Creek. Right. Is this for episode 14? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. No, and it is. It is. Is it episode 14? That, no, maybe it's 15. I, I, I'm, I'm 14? not sure. 15? Yeah, I think I did 14. Now we're up to 15. Yeah. Yeah. I'm losing track. Are you losing track? <laughs> okay. And here's the, let's roll the clip. This is all gifts for you. Every right. bit of it. That'll look good on you. <laughs> look at this here, and here's one for you, Missy. <laughs> That'll fit you just right. All of it. So, Zeke, I notice you're a strong young man. I, c I could use some, some help at the Wagon like Works. You'd be willing to work with me. You bet. Thank you. You're welcome. I tell you what, David did a great job in that oh, scene. Oh, he's great in that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Very professional, believable. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's great. Perfect. I couldn't believe it when I was watching it. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, look at David. Yeah, he's terrific. He's terrific. He's a, a great actor. Yeah. Now, what types of, uh, like, uh, like for this clip, I mean, I, I really, it was really nice. It, it did have that resolution sound. It yeah. had that, that sweetness, and it did have kind of that uplifting, right. you know, connecting type feel. Um, what type of programs do you use to score? Uh, I use a program called Sonar Producer X2. <clears throat> I use another program called Orchestra Gold. And there's a whole bunch of other plug-in programs that I use, which have instrumental sounds and things like that. What's so great about digital now is you can record uh, the sound of an orchestra uh, and it'll be very close to it because it's a uh, sample of the orchestra. However, to the trained ear, there's nothing that beats a live musician, li live people playing. You know, there's that way you touch the bow, the, the way you vibrated it, uh, vibrated and the way you may blow into a trumpet, get it real soft. Uh, there's all different nuances when you're a musician that right. you may not get from a program. So you have to think like a musician mm -hmm. when you play, right. you know? If you're going to be playing soft strings, you're going to hit the key on the piano softly. Not like that real hard because that's not what you're looking for. Right. Uh, and so it's great. It's like toys for guys, the programs. <laughs> <laughs> they really if are. If you compose, you know? Uh, uh, that that is so true. Um, now, in this next clip, no man believes um, you didn't film. You didn't do this film scoring this no. way. You were an actor. I acted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my friend uh, Jay McGee, who was a, a student from the Arts Institute mm -hmm. uh, in Tampa, mm -hmm. the film division there, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to play this character, and the uh, character is. Uh, is a uh, gentleman who uh, is really, really down on his luck. He lost his job. His wife left him. His son died in a, in a war overseas. Oh. And now the banker, where he does his banking, where his mortgage is, is says he's going to have to foreclose on him because he hasn't been making payments because he's, he's out of work. He, he can't do it. So he's really at his wit's end. You know, like, they really don't know where to go. Yeah. I sympathize. 
Um, so uh, what he does is he blames it all on his banker. And he takes a gun and he goes to the bank with the intentions of blowing away the, the, the banker. And that's when I go on to a tirade and take it all out on him. And that's what you're going to see. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look. I've got nothing. And it's because of you. My son died for you. He died and assholes like you get to live. He died so that fucks like you could steal the rest of us blind. These same fucks who build up these bubbles, knowing full well they're going to crash and burn. And then what do they do? They waltz in, they pick up their chips, they hit reset, and start all over again. Again with your money and my money. Too big? Too big to fail? What about those of us that feel so fucking small, man? Wow, that is incredible. Did you yeah. have to, what did you do? I mean, yeah, I had to stay in that zone. Yeah, matter of fact, that was shot at, I believe, 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and we shot most of it that day, and I had to do other scenes. But that scene was shot, that was the last one. I was late. Oh, wow. And I was spent after that, you know? Oh, I'd imagine. Yeah, and I had a, there's a whole other side of me. The reason I got into acting? Yeah. Because I wanted to get my films into music. So if I were to go there as just, you know, Joe Schmo, the composer, and said, do you need music for your film? Yeah. Uh, here's my card. And I knew where the card was going to go, um. you know. So I, uh, I said, there's got to be a better way. And so I said, well, I got to get inside the film and, and work that angle and work whatever I have to do inside the film or act in the film. So I took short roles. Yeah. And while I was inside, you know, and quote, unquote, I uh, said, by the way, <laughs> I, I compose for film. Hey, yeah, you know, I'm not just yeah, a mobster. That's correct. <laughs> so, oh, uh, wow. So that was my way of working myself in the door to get my score in there, uh, which is, you know, anybody can do anything on a film, and if they want to get their score in a film, that might be a way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you like acting more? I mean, how, how do you like acting compared to film composing? Uh, I like acting. I like them both. Yeah. But I lean towards film composing because that's my first love. Your Music first is love? my first love. Yeah. Now, um, did you go to school for film composition yeah. or were you self-taught? I, uh, well, a lot of it was self-taught, but I did go to school to prepare myself further, naturally. And I, I attended NYU uh, and took a music uh, program and uh, also an education program. So uh, the thing I want to emphasize, I had great schooling. It was downtown, you know, Washington Square Park, and it was just a great atmosphere. But the thing I wanted to emphasize to those composers out there, that <clears throat> you just can't put all your eggs into one basket because it's a very, very tough field to become a composer, even if you're very talented. Yeah. So you got to have a fallback position. And that's why I got my degree in education, because I taught for a long time, and that put bread on the table. Of course, I did some composing while that was happening and, uh, you know, and enjoyed myself with that and got, got to do some things, did some albums and stuff. The other thing I wanted to mention in terms of my education, yeah. uh, there's nothing that's more important if you're going to be a composer than getting a, a good background in composing for orchestral music. Know your instruments. Yeah. You have to know everything about all the instruments in an orchestra. Because different instruments do different things. Right. What their sound is like. And the other thing you got to know is uh, the combinations of instruments. Because certain instruments sound nice when they work together. Like woodwinds work nice together. You know, flute, clarinet, oboe, bassoon. Uh, and the, the strings as a sections wor section works nice together, but there's also combinations within different sections, you know? Like a, uh, a, a cello would sound good with a bassoon, which is a low woodwind. And a flute might sound good with a high-pitched violin, because violins can get up there. The string section is the most uh, util uh, important utilized section for a composer. Oh, 
know. Because it's very versatile. You could put any kind of music in front of strings and they'll just rip right through it. And then I brought some books to uh, supplement what I'm saying. Okay. Um, and this is a, a book on orchestration by Cecil Forsyth. And this is like one of the uh, treatises that were written and a lot of people have this musical examples and things like that. This is another book that you can uh, purchase. This, this is all on uh, Amazon or wherever. This is also a great book by Walter Piston, also called Orchestration. And uh, you, could, uh, you could run a tape back and find out what I said so you don't have to write it down. <laughs> but, uh, just to make it easy since we're in that kind of a day and age. Then there's uh, Jazz Composing, and this is from uh, Henry Mancini, who wrote the Pink Panther theme. Yes. And uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's and a lot of great movie scores. Yeah, uh, and it shows you his music. Mm -hmm. This is his actual notes that he wrote uh, in, in musical printed form. Not that he sat down and did all of these. This is the way it's been printed out. Mm. But he wrote those notes. And these, these books are very helpful because they have a CD in the back. Right. So if you want to play example number 65 on page whatever, you could play it and you could hear it. Wow. So you hear the example. You know, it's not like, well, what is this going to sound like if I write this way? So... It's terrific to get these books with CDs attached. And this is another one from Berkeley School of Music, which is an exceptional music school yeah. uh, in uh, Boston. And this is also a, uh, this is called Modern Jazz Voicings, how you voice cer certain instruments, you know, play, put this instrument here, put that instrument there, reverse them, change them around, blend with other instruments, wow. stuff like that. So you get to hear it also with this one because of the uh, CD that's in the back. Right. And you have... Um, many examples of how these things sound. Uh, now, I also brought a copy of a score. This is from the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark score by John Williams. And I wanted the audience to see this if you're not familiar with this stuff. This is the actual score that the conductor reads. Wow. And so every instrument and all of their notes is right in front of the conductor. If you ever go to a concert and you right. see a conductor up there and the head down, they're looking at one of these guys. Wow. Which is the score. And... Um, Oh. If you notice, the first page of the score, it's dum, da da da, dum, da 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 da. That's that opening theme, if yeah. you remember from Raiders, and it's played by brass, supplemented by some strings also. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it gets further developed, and then more brass instruments are added in, and then the woodwinds are added in. So it's woodwinds, brass, percussion, and the piano, and strings on the bottom. Wow. And that's the way uh, most scores are, are uh, listed. And then it gets more and more complicated when you get to the end of it because things start to fill out and the themes develop. Oh, wow. So even if you don't read music, you could see all the notes. You can the dots on here. You yeah. tell you that something's going on. <laughs> so, uh, the but the thing I want to convey more, most is to read scores while you're listening. Mm -hmm. And you can do it with your iPod or whatever, your... Uh, you know, your, your phone if you have the score downloaded. Mm -hmm. And you could follow as you're listening. So you get an idea of what composers do, how they introduce different sections of, of music and musicians to, to add attention to the score and right. how the string section sounds and so forth. So a good basic foundation of, uh, of the orchestra is what you should start with anyway. Right. If you love music, you should listen to all kinds of music anyway. Well, I agree. I completely agree. I'm glad you agree. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I listen to all kinds of music, too. Yeah, you have to, especially if you're a composer. It's a good policy. Yeah. I mean, it, it broadens your, your mind, too. I mean, if you listen to one kind of music all the time, you're not hearing what else is out there and the creativity of other people. So you have to broaden your, your, your musical tastes. If you don't like it, then that's it. Done. But you got to listen to other things that you've never listened to before. Right. You know? Well, thank you so much for oh, coming welcome. on the show. Thank Leon. you for having me. I enjoyed Absolutely. this. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I just I cannot thank you for being so generous with your time. Sure. Um, on our sponsor, uh, TTSN, they uh, they want to thank you for coming on the show as well, and they're going to give you a year on their talent shopping network. You can list yourself as a composer. Oh, nice. And um, as a talent, you thank can you. do both. Um, if you're on Facebook, uh, check out Art and Soul, Trina Fallon, all one word. And look for Leon's episode on www.starcomestudios.com. one more thing? Yeah. Happy Memorial Day. Yes. I Happy Memorial is, Day. Yeah, this is being shot Memorial Day weekend. It's going to be shown a week, week later, but I wanted to just Put pay it a little there. tribute. 
Absolutely, that's a very good thing. And thanks again for watching Art and Soul. Stay happy, Tampa. <laughs>